This video is all about process costing. But if you want to understand process costing, we should really contrast it with what you've hopefully already learned. Hopefully in your class you've already studied job order costing. And if you haven't, just go back through my previous videos. You'll see videos on job order costing. And what I want to do is just contrast that with process costing to start this video. And then obviously as you move on to the next videos, you'll see examples of how I do process costing and uh, production reports and things like that. So um, both of these costing methods are very interested in obviously what a product costs. And we know the cost of a product is the material plus the labor plus the overhead, and we also know that we know what the material is, we know what the labor cost is, but we have to estimate or apply overhead costs to uh, our products. And so they're both interested in doing the same things. Where they differ is that job order costing does this one unit at a time, where process costing does this one department at a time. And so what ends up happening is fairly different, but totally appropriate once you wrap your head around it. It's like reasonable that there's these two different methods uh, at getting at the same thing. What is our product cost? So job order costing is better used for companies that have custom products. So where every customer is different, even just a little bit different, where job order costing is useful is when you have a standard product and every customer is pretty much the same. So an example of a company that would use job order costing where it's uh, sorry, every customer, I gotta, I gotta write this out. Every customer is, I'll just say similar, maybe not the same, but you know, they're, they're getting a similar product out of you. So an example of a, a company that would use job order costing would be one like um, an accounting firm where every customer comes in, they have a slightly different needs. They're a law firm, right? If you're, you know, getting sued and you think, oh, I gotta go to the lawyer, I need help because somebody's suing me, you don't want a one size fits all solution, every customer is a little different. So when a job, when um, a law firm is figuring out how much it costs to serve you, they're going to look at each customer a little differently. Now let's contrast that with, say, Energizer that makes batteries, right? They make AA batteries, and they make all sorts of different sizes, but let's focus on the AA battery. doesn't matter what the customer is or what they're using for it. When Energizer determines their cost, all their customers are the same, right? They cost one battery or like Bic that makes pens. Uh, every pen, they don't care which customer has it or what the customer is using it for. They just go, oh, the cost to make a pen is this, right? It doesn't matter the customer. So a law firm, every customer is different. We treat them differently. Uh, pen manufacturer, every customer is the same, essentially, right? We're making the same pen for everybody. We're putting it on the shelves and we're saying, we hope you like our pen. This is it, you know? Um, so that's the difference between the two. Um, and because of that, uh, you know, when I'm a law firm and I'm tracking my costs, I say, oh, you know, the Bell file came in, you know, Tony Bell's getting sued. Uh, we're going to spend three hours doing this. We've used this many photocopies worth of paper, and this is the cost that we've spent serving them. And by the way, we'll send them a big bill that will more than cover our costs. Energizer, on the other hand, they won't say, oh, this individual battery, it went from this department to that department, and these are the costs associated with the individual battery. No, no, no. They'll track their costs by department. So what I thought I'd do is I'd give a short example of uh, like a big pen, right? A pen and uh, how their costs might be tracked. So again, rather than saying, okay, the pen comes in and maybe maybe we get it in in pieces, uh, you know, we... we um, have a department that does the plastic, little plastic case department. Uh, we also have, you know, there's a little ink tube that goes inside, so let's call it the ink tube department. 
so we make plastic cases, we make ink tubes, uh, then we put it all together in an assembly department. And so the way process costing would work was we'd look at it a department at a time and say, okay, the plastic case department, we uh, made a million cases into this month or whatever time period you want to look at, and to make a million cases, it cost us $50,000 in material, labor, and overhead, right? So we go 50,000 divided by a million cases. The plastic case is costing us five cents per unit. And we would do the same in the ink tube department. So let's say 10 cents per unit and assembly. And let's say again, uh, let's say seven cents a unit. So at the end of the day, what the company is going to do is they're going to say, okay, we've added up all our departmental costs, five cents plus 10 cents plus seven cents to make a pen cost us 22 cents per unit. So we know when we sell it to Walmart for 50 cents, we're making a profit and Walmart sells it, turns around and sells it to our, their customers for a buck. But you know, it costs us, Bic, the pen maker, 22 cents a unit. But we track our costs, not by individual pen. I'm not going to say, oh, this specific pen, it costs this much. I just look at it as a whole in my department. I couldn't do that as a law firm, right? Uh, if I'm a law firm or an accounting firm or some you know, uh, uh, company that has custom products, a custom cabinet maker, uh, I can't say, oh, what were the departmental costs of months? I have to say, what was the cost of that specific job? So that's why job order costing and process costing are treated a little differently. One final concept about process costing that's really key to understanding it is the concept of equivalent units. So when we decide our cost per unit, we don't actually get a cost per unit, we get something called the cost per equivalent unit. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll down here. And so I want to highlight that concept with just a quick example. Um, my, uh, this is a pretend example. Uh, let's pretend we are a fence painting company and uh, we are charged with painting this fence and there's two sections of fence we're worried about. There's fence number one and fence number two. They are identical sections. And I'm in charge of painting fence one and I do this and I do this and I, I paint these first four boards, right? And then let's just pretend I did a beautiful job. I know it's a little bit sloppy, but pretend I did a great job on these first four boards. And my partner was painting all morning, and they painted, but they didn't paint one board at a time. They painted from left to right, and they did the bottom half of their boards. And again, just pretend I'm doing a fantastic, beautiful job on my boards. Okay, so uh, it's lunchtime, and our boss comes up to us and they say, what did you do this morning? And I say, Boss, look at that. I did four boards. And he says, good job. That's about what we expect you to do. Four boards, and they are 100% done. And then the boss goes over and looks at fence number two, and he says, hey, what did you do? And the guy who does fence number two says, well, I didn't get any boards done. And the boss says, hey, you didn't get any boards done. You did a terrible job. Look at good old Tony. He got four boards done. You have zero boards done and he says you know bad job well you can look at this and I can look at this and say that boss is being a bit silly bosses tend to be silly and that boss is, is wrong here uh, what we have is actually eight boards whoop, that are 50% complete right we have eight boards that are half done that is the equivalent this is where this notion of equivalent units comes in. I'm just going to scroll down just a touch more. That's the equivalent of having 8 times 50%. That's the equivalent of having four boards that are 100% complete or done. So we've basically done an equivalent amount of work. Now, this concept of equivalent units is really going to come into play as you get to understand process costing. Because what can happen is you can have this factory that's producing something and it can get something half done, right? 
And so what do you do with that? How many units have you completed? Well, I've got some things that are half done. How do you deal with that when you're trying to figure out um, how complete or incomplete your, your jobs are and how many units you have indeed completed? So this concept of eight boards being 50% complete is the same as four boards being 100% done. That is at the heart of process cost. So I hope you enjoy the chapter. It's a challenging one, but I think I've got good examples to help you understand the concept. All right. Bye for now.